Hi, I'm Erin Ryder from Chasing UFOs, and I'm here at the world-famous Arecibo Observatory in Puerto Rico, site of the largest single aperture telescope ever constructed. Now, usually this thing is used for listening to the skies. Since 1999, the scientists here have been collecting data for the SETI program, searching for signs of extraterrestrial intelligent life. But today, we're gonna do a lot more than just listen as we transmit the collective global response to the wow signal into outer space. But first, let's take a look back to the beginning of June and the video we made to launch this project. 35 years ago, we received a signal from space. It became known as the wow signal. Many people believe the wow signal was kind of like a tweet from outer space. If it was a message, isn't it about time we sent a reply? To coincide with the 35th anniversary of the WOW signal, we are going to crowdsource a reply and send it back using the biggest radio telescope we can get our hands on. Arthur C. Clarke famously said, either we are alone in the universe or we are not. Both are equally terrifying. And that fascination with the concept of intelligent life out there and what would happen if we somehow managed to make contact is at the heart of all of the cases we investigate on our show. Given the chance to send a one-time message to an extraterrestrial civilization, what exactly would we say? That was a task we gave you, and oh boy, did you rise to the challenge. You sent greetings. Hey, space aliens. Hello, my name is Robert Schwartzman. Hello, beings of another world. You sent well, welcomes. Uh, you know, visit sometime if you'd like. Uh... You sent warnings. Enough with the probes. If after Armageddon, those cheeky aliens try and park in our resident parking bays. You sent everything from the silly. Come and party here with us. To the serious. Oil. The human condition is defined by the fact that we are mortal and we long. From the inspirational. We trust that we will have much good. To the profane. And goodness to share with each other. Everything from science fiction. This message goes out to whoever's piloting UFOs. To hard science. This could be called uh, active SETI or. You shared everything from music to sports. If, if we could explain baseball to you in 20 seconds. Uh, then we would be geniuses. To food. We are not delicious. Thousands of messages from different cultures in different languages from all over the planet. But all of them say, we are human, we are here. Thanks. So tell me a little bit about the telescope that we're working with. It's a remarkable engineering accomplishment, and yet it's, a, it's also very simply constructed. It is the biggest single dish telescope in the world. It's 305 meters across. That It was conceived by a graduate student in the late 50s. Bill Gordon is his name. It was uh, built in a, about a two and a half to three year span from 1960 to 1963. And it was originally planned to have a lifetime of 10 to 15 years, and we're here 50 years later, and it's still on the forefront of science. I mean, we're underneath the dish right now, and this is spectacular, because I think from the top, you might not know that this is actually mesh we're underneath. That's right. And then what, what is this we're looking at above us right here? That is the Gregorian dome. Some people call it the golf ball. That dome has a secondary and tertiary reflector in it that actually takes that energy and focuses it to a point. So now all we have to do is put in a rotary floor with different receivers to rotate into place to do the different frequencies. Well, let's talk a little bit about our particular mission here. So we've actually brought you over 20,000 tweets. How exactly will we be transmitting these messages into space? It's not so much the sheer numbers of them, but how do you do it and how do you make a serious effort to, to send those out rather than just turning on a radio and saying you transmitted them? I mean, we've actually uh, coded up these messages with a header, so every tweet has a header on it that we believe, uh, based on the repetition of those codes before every message, would be hard to distinguish as anything but an ordered intelligent source. All right, so where exactly are we sending these messages? We picked out three stars that are in our beam that actually pass over the telescope on August 15th. Uh, and they're three uh, solar-like stars. So they're similar mass, similar color, similar size to our sun. One of them is known to have a planetary system. The others might. And we will send our transmissions to those three stars. Now, obviously, we've had a lot of fun with this project. It's not exactly hard science. But what do you guys think about the project? 
Well, I mean, a, a big part of our mission here is, is education and outreach, and the sociological aspects of this are fascinating. I mean, if you read through the tweets and, and uh, get some feeling of what people, where they think they are in the universe and what they want to say to people out there, that in and of itself is fascinating. And, and if we're able to reach a population of younger people in particular who contemplate the distances to the nearest stars, the sheer size of the universe, we will have accomplished a lot, and we're really happy to be part of it. This is the control room here at the Arecibo Observatory, where we will send all your messages up into the skies. But before we do, I'd like to thank everyone who participated in this project, Dr. Bob Kerr, the team here at Arecibo, and of course, to you at home. And so, if everyone's ready, Nathan, you're ready? We're ready. All right, let's do this. Just like that, they're on their way. Godspeed, little tweets. Thank you for joining us here at the Arecibo Observatory. We've had so much fun. Until next time, I'm Erin Ryder from Chasing UFOs saying, keep watching and listening to the skies.